hey mo's welcome back to my channel first of all i want to say that i apologize for taking so long to load what happened was i actually tried to record this video about a few weeks ago and i spent i was talking for 45 minutes to an hour and my phone died and at that point like i was just over it. i tried to re-record again but like the energy just wasn't there so i'm like you know what i'ma just take a break give it some time and come back when like i'm able to like give you guys you know a positive vibe so in today's video what we're going to be discussing is what you should do after you get hired at a club if you haven't watched my first video make sure that you tune into my beginner's guide to stripping how to audition how to get started and then come back and watch this video if you've already watched um the first video you got hired you want to know what to do next or you're just nosy you're in the right place i'm jimmy mo and i'm doing me i'm jimmy mo and i'm doing me jmfdl bitch all right so let's just get started first one it could be really for everybody but really for the baby mamas is put your kids on a schedule um, your schedule is going to change like this is a life-changing event you know what i mean like your sleep schedule is going to change and your income is going to change and what will happen a lot of times is that females will get so wrapped up in this fast money that they forget they have kids it's such a fast lifestyle and it's so much fast money coming in so don't be one of those people who just sleep all day while your kids are running around your house like put them on a schedule put them in and daycare so that when you're asleep during the day they have something to do make sure you have a nanny just put your kids on a schedule it's it's literally it's, it's only beneficial for you the next thing is to clean and organize your house this goes for everybody and this might be something that's like quickly and easily overlooked but i feel like it's very important money is going to be coming in like faster than you've ever experienced and with fast money coming in you're going to be shopping continuously if you start off with a clean environment and a positive environment it's going to make you more successful so make sure that you throw away old stuff that you don't want anymore because you'll be buying a lot of new stuff um and just make sure that like you're in a clear space before you get started because when you go to work work's gonna be so hectic and you don't want to bring that tension that stress home like when you come home you just want to relax so before your shifts always make sure that your house is clean this is just for like everybody in general the first thing that i recommend doing is getting a lock usually when you get hired at a strip club they will assign you a locker. Um, some clubs will do it the first day. Some clubs, they might have a shortage on lockers and they want you to earn your stripes before you come. But um, it's still important to get a lock. Like in most dressing rooms, they do have like security cameras. Females do make money, but there are broke bitches in there who do still. So, you know, make sure you don't bring nothing valuable. The second one is to buy a good pair of stripper shoes. Now, this is for somebody who um audition and they just audition in their regular like club shoes if you were one of those people this would be the time to invest in some good stripper shoes and again don't go all out spending 150 dollars on some like bedazzle like shimmy shoes just get the regular 40 dollar hollers that i told you about in the last video the stripper shoes are way more comfortable than like club shoes so going out shoes are cool to look cute like to audition in but when you're actually gonna be working and you're standing on your feet for long periods of time like the stripper shoes are the best shoes i like the seven inch shoes um i recommend six inch but the higher the shoes like the higher the shoe is like the flatter it comes on the foot and the more comfortable it is believe it or not the next thing you also want to buy is lots of panty. Get maybe two or three outfits, but what you mainly need is underwear, like those two-piece like bikini thingies that they have. Underwears are an investment. Just because you got hired, you still just don't want to like go on a whim and buy all this crazy stuff because you don't know if this is going to be for you or not. Like, even if you don't go to work, like especially the bottom pieces, you could still wear at home. Like the two pieces, if your body permits for it, you can wear um, like at the beach or something if you're on vacation so those could be reused um but the outfits you know don't go too crazy with them the next thing you want to do is make a goal for yourself so when you come into the door you need to have goals already don't just come in there like 
oh, I want money like so that I can get my nails done and I could go shopping, like have a goal. Do you want to start a business? Do you want to go back to school? Um, do you want to fix your credit? Do you want to get a house built? Like, or do you want to buy a house? And once you make that goal, get a, a check in a savings account, make sure like um, strippers can do taxes. And I'll do another video about taxes and getting a tax return if you guys are interested in that. But um, make sure that you have a goal because again, like this is a really fast lifestyle. Money comes like this like it comes and goes and so you want to make sure that you have something going for yourself money established so that when you're ready to tap out if you want to break that like you have something going for yourself next thing is set your boundaries don't be so desperate for money that you will go for anything obviously you want to abide by the club's rules so if there's no touching no touching all the customers, they know the club's rule. They understand that a lot of the customers have been coming to this club before you've worked there. Don't let them finesse you out of breaking the rule. Sometimes like customers will test the new girls to see what they can get away with. And if clubs are strict, they will fire you for breaking like a little rule. Some clubs will give you a warning, but some clubs will fire you. I've been fired on my first day. But set your boundaries. Like if you don't like to be touched, then don't let anyone touch you. Like, if you don't want to give out your number, don't give out your number. Come up with your alibi, the fake city that you live in. You gotta have your story consistent. Like, because a lot of these guys will be regulars and you'll see a lot of guys and you'll forget about them. But they'll remember you and they'll remember the shit that you, that you tell them. So try to get, like, set your boundaries and try to get, like, your stories and, and stuff straight. Next, you want to get to know the security. You want to get to know the DJ. You want to get to know the bartender. And you want to get to know the manager. And now you want to get to know the security because they're going to keep you safe. Um, they're going to be the ones that walk you to your car or valet, whatever, however the club is. They're going to be the ones that are standing outside of the doors um, when you do your private dances. They're going to be the ones that make sure you get home or to your car safe. So the DJ, he's, he or she will make you look good because they're going to be the ones who control the lights on the stage. They're going to be the ones who play all the music. So you want to get to know them and you want to get in good with them because it's only going to help your stage appearance. You know, um, if the DJ doesn't like you, like, you know, they might not play the music that you want to be played. People can be bitter and spiteful in that industry. They like to be tipped and they feel some type of way if they don't get tipped. You want to get to know the bartenders because they're going to be the ones making your drink and like i was saying earlier like with knowing your boundaries that's also like knowing your drink limits stay a drink below your limit because you the the goal you want to get fucked up and have a good time but you want to make money you don't want to be so fucked up that you're crying at customers and that you're not making money and the bartender is going to help with that you know if you have an agreement with them beforehand you get to know them you can let them know like hey after my fourth drink i need a shirley temple or i need a virgin margarita and they're gonna like help you get home safe as well i personally don't tip the bartender but i will make sure whatever customer i'm with i make sure that they tip him or her and i make sure they tip her well and i'll make sure she knows like that i'm on her side so it's not just like oh you know i'll be like make sure you tip the bartender well or i'll take the pen and write my own tips so it's like i am tipping but not for my pocket if that makes sense you get you should get to know is the managers um, just because the managers, obviously, they're the ones in charge of hiring people. They're the ones in charge of firing people. A lot of the times, the managers will, like, have some of the first contacts with the customers. And they'll know, like, who has a lot of money, who's getting all the singles. And, you know, they'll, like, refer you. So, you want to tip management um, as well to not every manager because sometimes it'll be three managers working but the managers who deserve the tips the managers who look out for you you want to definitely look out for them otherwise they'll find somebody else to look out for another person that you want to get to know is the house mom so not all clubs have house moms but most of them do so what a house mom is is um usually she's an ex-stripper um and she'll just hang out in the dressing room she brings all her own supplies tampons, ponytail holders, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush, whatever you need, she is supposed to have it. Snacks, refreshments, whatever you need, she's supposed to have it. 
and um basically whatever you use you want to tip her like she'll help you do your makeup she'll help you pin your hair zip up like your outfit in the back really if you're working at a strip club you shouldn't be wearing shit that's hard to put on girl. but you know yeah it's like she'll she'll help you with that all the supplies that she has she buys with her own money it's not club money like so she buys that with her own money and she depends on your tips um to continue to fund it now if she don't got good stuff don't tip her because what are you doing with your money anyways but if she's actually providing like good products and like you find yourself using it a piece of gum a mint whatever you know be a decent person and tip her don't be a brokey i mean you're in this business you're making money act like it next thing that you want to do you want to learn the cost of private dances not table dances though table dances are like the dances that you do on the floor obviously you want to know how much those cost but you know those are pretty simple it's like 10 20 30 dollars the most i've ever seen for a floor dance was 30 dollars but you want to know how much those private dances cost because at the end of the day you are a sales consultant yes you're a stripper but you are selling a service you're a sales consultant so in sales Ultimately, what you want to do is you want to sell, yes, but you want to upsell. So your goal is to upsell. You want to know how much those, how much does an hour room cost? I've worked at clubs where one hour is four hundred dollars, and like thirty minutes is like two sixty, two forty. But in addition to knowing how much those rooms cost, you want to know how much you're going to get paid for the rooms. Like you want to know how much you're going to receive for the rooms and how much the club is gonna receive. Just because a customer paid $400 for an hour room, you don't get that full $400. You have to pay for the rental of that room. And so that could be like $50, $60. So you wanna make sure that you know how much you're taking and how much the club is taking. Because in some cases, like at one club I worked at, they had three dances on the floor. Dances are $20 a song, which is $60. Um, in the back, they had three dances in the back for $90, but after the dances, you only walk away with $65. So for me, you know, I'm not going to hustle those three dances in the back because I'm only getting $5 more, like the customer spending more money that's not going to me. Another thing, you want to make sure that you, you come in early. Um, one, that's how you're going to get to know like all the staff members at the club. But also, one, the dressing room is not going to be like super duper packed if you come in early. Two, house fee. And house fee is like basically how much it costs to like be there. Like you're, it's like being a barber or like a hairstylist. Like you're renting space and customers essentially like from the club so house can be anywhere from like 40 to 200 dollars i've never paid 200 dollars i think the most i've ever paid for house is 160 dollars but depending on um what club you go you work at like you know the prices are gonna vary like if you're at a more higher end club i can imagine them charging higher amounts so make sure you know what the house fees are it's like if the club opens at nine you come in at eight and get ready and you're on the floor at nine they'll make you pay like 40 to 70 dollars depending on how on the night so make sure you learn like your club schedule how much the cost of house is but then also coming in early when you come in early um get a chance to learn like the poll so if pole dancing is something that you are interested in learning, like, you know, you have time to practice where there's not a full house, there's not a lot of people to watch and judge you. And then it also helps make your night too. So like, if you come in, like, usually there's a lot of people who will come in like before the night rush and they'll spend a lot of money. Like, usually I'm the type of person I'll work like, um, at some clubs I'll work 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. and I'll leave like because I will have made my night with people who are avoiding the rush like um so it's a good way to like get an extra like you know to boost your night 200 300 400 you just never know like who might come in early so the next thing you want to do is figure out like what clientele you appeal to what clientele you want to appeal to and what clientele you're comfortable with Personally, I go for the older white man to middle-aged white man 
just because um i'm not attracted to them it's impossible for me to get my feelings involved with somebody that i'm not attracted to it's very easy for me to keep things professional the next one you want to do is figure out your niche are you a, me personally i'm a talker that's how i make my money by this little mouthpiece here you know I, you can or you can and i i don't you know aside from me talking like before I got my boobs done, the best thing I had going for myself was my ass. And so that's what I would focus on. Now that I have my boobs done, like, you know, I like to rub them tatas in the face, you know, slap them with a titty or two and they love them. Next, you want to build regular clientele. It's so important that you have some sort of regulars coming in because they're going to set the bar for your night. So say like, you know, you have like Tom who comes in every Saturday and he spends $200. Um, I forgot how much, 300 I said, I don't know, I can't remember. But you know, every Saturday, if you know that Tom comes in at 10 o'clock PM and he's giving you $300, it's like that that can make or break your night. If you have a $1,000 night and then you still got $300 from Tom, that's $1,300. But then on the flip side, if you only had a $200 night and you got that $300 from Tom, now you had a $500 night and it's not like as shitty as a night as it could have been. The best way to get your regulars is to set a schedule. Setting a schedule for me is so important. It helps with my anxiety because I'm the type of person, I can't work more than three days a week. For me, I can't work more than four hours in a shift. If I do, I just get super overwhelmed. It starts to give me anxiety and it starts to not be fun anymore. It starts to be more of a chore. And once things are like chores and commitments, you know, I just kind of. Also helps with like just, again, your kids, if you have them, like them knowing what to expect, you know, you want to get into the habit. Like you don't want to just be so wrapped up in stripper world that you forget about everything. You know, you want to make sure you're like taking care of your household duties, that you're taking care of yourself, your mental health, and that you're not just eating, sleeping, and stripping because that's not like a healthy lifestyle. Like if you have a short-term goal that you're trying to accomplish, cool. But for your everyday life, you just can't live like that. So the next thing you want to do is invest in yourself so this is like after the money starts coming in you figured out like that you really enjoy stripping you found a club that works for you everything is going good you want to start investing in yourself again invest in school um one of my investments was my boob job i got i spent six thousand dollars on on them and i made it back in less than a month so it's a really good investment um Cool sculpting is one thing that I'm also investing in um, to get rid of like the fat in my stomach. Like I did my first session and I'll do a vlog on that once I get the results and I'll give you guys the honest truth. Um, you know, even like, and it's not even about like aesthetic things. It's getting a crib. It's doing something with yourself and your mind. Like, cause if you don't have goals and you don't have boundaries set, what happens is you you get in the drug and then you're coming to work to chase a high and you're not coming to work to make money and you that's how a lot of girls get wrapped up in that lifestyle. I've seen girls who have had better nights than me, but I walked home with more money than them because they're doing dances for cocaine and they're spending all their money on drugs where they only have enough money to pay for house. And so you don't want to be those girls. You don't want to be like that. Make sure that you're investing in yourself. You know, you want to get your nails done. You want to get your eyebrows done. You know, you want to make sure like that you're buying skincare products for yourself, like little outfits. That's what I mean by investing, doing things that's going to make you more money. Speaking of drugs, um, be prepared to be introduced to drugs, okay? The first time I ever saw cocaine before, I saw somebody snort it, was in 2016. Um, I was working at this club that I'm not gonna name. I'm literally just sitting topless before my boob job with my orangutans, chips, eating filet mignon, 
and sipping like $600 champagne while this guy like just snorts cocaine. I do want to um, mention like there's a lot of people who are dying, a lot of young mothers, a lot of young black mothers who are passing and dropping like flies um, due to fentanyl. So that's something that you always want to keep in mind. You don't want to die. You don't want to get drugged up. You don't want to get laced. You don't want to get kidnapped. So, you know, just, just say no. Um, have a few drinks. If liquor doesn't help to take the edge off you working, then stripping is not for you. And that's okay. Like, it's not for everybody. But don't force yourself to, to do things by taking drugs. If you have to take drugs, this ain't for you. Be prepared to turn down prostitution. There are men, there are so many men in this club who are paying to see your boobs. Why would you sell yourself short by having sex with them for like 200 or a thousand? Even a thousand dollars to me is just, you just got $500 from showing like somebody your boobs. Why would you want to fuck for a thousand? Like a lot of guys, like they will do whatever like you're willing to do. Like a lot of them, they just want to be in a pretty girl's presence. They don't care. And they're trying to test the waters to see what they can get away with. You're setting the standard. Once you up that cookie, that's it. That's all. That's all they're going to want. So like don't do it un unless unless you're already a hoe unless you're already going around fucking niggas for free then do you sis more power to you but if you're like me then don't start just for the money trust and believe that you know there are other blessings out there for you and you don't need to be desperate be prepared to turn down females too there's lots of lesbians like I never realized how many lesbians existed in the world until I became a stripper. They'll like, you know, you you will think that like somebody is just innocently giving you a compliment the whole time they're trying to eat your monkey. So if you're not into females, don't let them bitches like peer pressure you into eating your coochie because some of them are super aggressive and they will. The next one for me is don't be too friendly with the girls. Don't be too friendly with the staff members either, but don't be too friendly with the girls. So in the club, there's always or the, that group of female, they're always in the dressing room complaining about how slow and that there's no money, even though there's money on the floor. They're always at the bars on their phone with their arms folded. They're always buying each other drinks. They're always in some drama. They never have rides home and they're usually the drug addicts, but you don't want to be too cool with them because again, what's going to happen is like, you know, you either going to be so wrapped up in their drama, they'll be coming to work crying. Oh my God, my boyfriend just cheated on me and blah, 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 blah. And that fucks up your money or it's just drama. Oh, me and her were cool. I let her borrow my shoes and she did this and she did that. And now like you fighting and you're not there to socialize. You're not there to, to make friends. You're there to make money. Me, they're just so lame. Like I'll never understand like girls will buy each other drinks and to me that's just so stupid why would you sit in the back ignore the customers buy each other drinks you know like it's stupid i never buy anyone drinks not even myself like if you want to go buy rounds of drinks with your friends go to a bar in addition to being too friendly with the girls don't be too friendly with management either like staff and stuff they'll try and like especially if you're young and a little like naive they will try to make it seem like they can do shit for you they'll try to make it seem like you need them no, the most that you ever need to do for like the staff members is to tip them and be respectful. Don't be a dick writer. Don't go fucking the management and stuff because they can't do shit for you. If they could do something for you, they would be customers and not employees. Like, you know, they'd be there spending a check, not there for a check. So keep that in mind because a lot of the staff members they do have like really big nasty egos a lot of them are older a lot of them really don't have anything going for themselves and so like they need this job to like feel validated well the next one is don't be afraid to look for other clubs like if you get hired at a club this is the only club you got hired at because other clubs are busy or whatever take what you can from the club don't work at the club every day. Don't overdo it. Talk to your customers about it. Be discreet. You know, just kind of slip it in like, hey, um, so what other clubs do you go to? And then if they start talking, then ask questions. Don't just go like, hey, I don't want to work here anymore because some of them are really cool with the management and they might tell and like get you fired like before you're ready to part way. And then 
if you can't find any other clubs or like just sh the money's good but every day you come from work you're depressed every day you come from work you feel dirty like you haven't loosened up you haven't like nothing has grown on to you because you know when you first start like if somebody like you know you you don't really want to be touched as much like you're super like antsy but like as you get into it like you get more comfortable and you start to be okay with somebody like rubbing your shoulder or touching you more like but if you find that three weeks later if someone touches you and you're still just like uh you have anxiety or like you're crying and you just feel like a dirty whore like even if the money's good even if you make a lot of money like you can't put a price on like your mental health so just trust whatever you if it's god allah buddha trust what you believe in and and have faith that there's a greater blessing waiting for you aside from this so don't be afraid to walk away because you were surviving and living before you were a stripper and you survive and live like after you become one um and then the last one is to always remain humble so don't just because you got into the game and like you got your money coming in you bought your first designer bag or you got your foreign don't be like trying to down the working class nine to five people be humble you feel me because the money is so fast you can be like a thousandaire one day and you can be broke the next you can be a thousandaire this morning and be broke in the evening you know like so make sure that you just are humble about everything and that you continuously have a plan so that you can maintain a lifestyle you've obtained with or without stripping like that's the goal stripping is supposed to be a temporary means to an end a stepping stone it's supposed to get your foot in the door to help you live the lifestyle that you want until you're in a place where you can afford to live that lifestyle without stripping that's what it is so don't get caught up in the mix that's all i have so um give me feedback ask questions like don't write me on instagram asking me about youtube write me on youtube asking me about youtube like, if this video was helpful let me know if you still have questions let me know um i'm going to be doing dropping some videos and i promise i'm trying to get more consistent i did my own here y'all like it Make sure you follow me on social media, and if you like this video, you want to see more, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and turn the notification bell on. Yeah! I'm Jimmy Mo, and I'm doing me. I'm Jimmy Mo, and I'm doing me. I'm Jimmy Mo, and I'm doing me.